Jessica didn't want to go over to her grandmother that day. But it wasn't because it was her senior year at college and she needed to work on her thesis. Rosemary Moore was a quarrelsome and wayward old woman who always looked for problems where there were none. And now she decided that she was terminally ill and urgently needed the help of her relatives. Jessica's parents had been divorced for a long, long time and hardly ever talked to each other. The most interesting part was that it might not have happened if it weren't for some of the help from Mrs. Moore, and therefore neither one of them was now in a hurry to spend their time with the old woman. Rose and George were married for about eight years when their family started having problems. And it didn't happen without some input from Rosemary Moore, who started expressing her doubts regarding the paternity of George's daughter. She looks nothing like you. Trust me, she's not your daughter. Rose cheated on you, and your daughter is living proof of that, the woman insisted. At first, Jessica's father refused to believe that he might not be her biological parent. But the more Rosemary insisted, the more probable her theory seemed to George. The man had also noticed that his daughter didn't look anything like him, and therefore he was tormented by painful doubts from time to time. Being a loving and faithful wife, Rose tried to rectify the situation, but it was all in vain. To Jessica's chagrin, her parents started getting into fights all the more often. Eventually, Rose grew so tired of her husband's unjustified accusations that she insisted on getting a DNA test, which would finally end this discussion. The result turned out to be exactly as Rose expected, which confirmed that she was telling the truth. With a probability of 99.9%, .9%, Jessica was George Moore's daughter. Unfortunately, clearing up this situation didn't put an end to the family problems. Rose and George felt like strangers who only had one thing in common, their eight-year-old daughter. The painful divorce that ensued brought an end to their dysfunctional relationship. The court gave Rose custody over Jessica, and George went to live his life as a bachelor. Sometime later, George met his new wife, which completely destroyed his chances of ever getting back with Rose. Having learned that Jessica was indeed her son's biological daughter, Rosemary Moore calmed down and started behaving as if nothing had happened. But thanks to her input, Jessica had lost her father and could only see him on the weekends now. And now, so many years later, Rosemary Moore called Jessica saying that she wanted to see her and ask for her help. Of course, Jessica didn't stop loving her grandmother despite everything she did. And although the old woman was a very stubborn person, Jessica still felt that she was family. After seeing the results of the DNA test, Rosemary became noticeably kinder and recognized Jessica as her granddaughter. Seeing Jessica on the doorstep, Mrs. Moore couldn't help but smile. I already started thinking that you weren't coming. Rose and George never have time for me. You're the only person I can rely on. Oh, come on, Grandma. Mom and Dad are simply very busy, and I don't mind being the one to keep you company. Jessica answered. The expression on Mrs. Moore's face made it obvious that she was very happy with her granddaughter's answer. Soon, they were already sitting at the table, drinking hot tea and sharing the latest news. Jessica told her grandmother that she was planning on working at an orphanage after graduation. Rosemary Moore shook her head doubtfully, but refrained from commenting. She knew her granddaughter well enough to try to impose her will on her. However, the old woman believed that working at an orphanage wouldn't bring her granddaughter financial prosperity nor success. But on the other hand, Jessica's kindness aroused sincere admiration in the old woman. Rosemary was never as kind, and now she even felt somewhat ashamed of this fact. How are you, Grandma? How's your blood pressure? Jessica asked, getting ready to clean the house. It's not great, to be honest. I already told George about it, but he doesn't have time for my problems. The old woman answered with a sad sigh. Jessica gave her grandmother her medicine and put her to bed. Picking up a mop and a wet rag, the young woman quickly washed the floors and the porch in front of the house. She then went on to clean the guest room, which was a terrible mess. There were old worn out shoes and piles of newspapers that had yellowed with time. 
and a lot of other things that should have been thrown out a long time ago. At some point, sorting through piles of trash, the young woman came across an old photograph which pictured a pleasant-looking young man of about 25. The man's face seemed vaguely familiar, but the young woman was sure that she never saw him before. Grandma, who is this man? Jessica asked, going up to the old woman's bed. Rosemary Moore put on her glasses and looked at the photograph carefully. Her face turned pale and her breathing became intermittent and slightly hoarse. Grandma, what's wrong? Are you feeling all right? Should I call an ambulance? Jessica was worried. The old woman shook her head and asked for a glass of water. She deliberately drank it in small sips in order to drag out the time and postpone answering the young woman's question. But Jessica was a smart young lady and immediately figured out her maneuver. So she repeated her question a little later. Rosemary Moore was clearly uncomfortable, but realizing the futility of her attempts to avoid answering the question, she said, I knew this would come to light one day. You see, how do I put it? Basically, this man is your grandfather, Jessica. That's why you look so much like him, and you got his temper too. You never saw him because I got pregnant by one man, but I married someone else. Thus, George was born. We never saw his real father again. Jessica felt the blood rush to her face and her cheeks started burning. But why were you so surprised that I didn't look like my dad? Didn't you know how genetics work? And that whole thing with the DNA test? All of that eventually made my parents get a divorce. The young woman asked with resentment in her voice. Rosemary Moore teared up as she realized what a terrible mistake she'd made. Please forgive me, Jessica. I don't know what came over me. For some reason, I got into my head that Rose had been cheating on George and got pregnant by someone else. The old woman answered with a sob. Only now did Jessica understand her grandmother's motives. Rosemary made a mistake in her youth and it clouded her judgment for the rest of her life. Realizing that she couldn't change the past, the young woman switched the conversation to a different topic. She decided to keep the photo of her grandmother's ex as a keepsake. A year flew by. Jessica graduated from the university and went to work at an orphanage just as she planned. Moreover, the young woman was sure that she'd made the right decision and never doubted it once. The only thing that upset Jessica was the pitiful state that the orphanage building was in since it hadn't had any work done on it for over 50 years. Of course, the management often talked about the need for renovations, but things never went beyond words. One day, as she was on her way home from work, Jessica saw an old man standing at the bus stop. The elderly man was moving his head from side to side somewhat strangely, trying to catch the eyes of the passersby. It was quite cold outside and the old man was shivering wrapping himself in a shabby jacket in the autumn wind that was piercing him to the bones. Realizing that something was wrong, Jessica stepped closer. Excuse me, sir, do you need help? The woman asked. The stranger looked at Jessica and, smiling timidly, replied, Yes, ma'am, I can't understand what happened. My memory fails me and I can't find my way home. It's okay, sir, let me help you. I live nearby a quarter mile away from here. And I live alone, so there's enough room for you to stay with me, Jessica said. The young woman was delighted that the old man accepted her offer. He couldn't remember his name or virtually any other information about himself. It's okay, he'll have to rest. It will help him come to his senses, and then we'll figure out what to do next, Jessica thought. At home, the woman cooked dinner for the old man and helped him get settled in the guest room. Here, you can take a rest and we'll decide what to do next tomorrow, Jessica said. The old man teared up as he thanked the young woman and then saw an old photograph standing on the bedside table. The elderly man suddenly perked up and gently touched it with his hand. Who is this? His face seems familiar, the old man asked. Oh, this is my grandfather, or rather my biological grandfather. The woman corrected herself. The old man took the photograph and turned pale. 
A gleam of realization flashed through the man's eyes and lit up his face with a sweet smile. That person is me, ma'am. Only back when I was young. Sure, I have memory problems. I don't remember anything I should. But I'm sure of this. That's definitely me. And in the background is a stadium where a concert of one of the most famous rock bands was held. The old man whispered. Finding it hard to believe the old man's words, Jessica compared the stranger's face in the photograph to that of the elderly guest. They definitely looked very much alike. There was no denying it. How did I not notice it right away? Jessica thought. To her great chagrin, the old man couldn't remember neither his first nor his last name. Since it was already rather late, they decided to deal with everything in the morning and go to bed. Jessica spent the night in agonizing anticipation, and when the morning finally came, there was a knocking at the door of her house. Wondering who it could be this early in the morning, Jessica opened the door and froze. Three young men in suits were standing in the doorway. There was a Rolls Royce parked at the gate behind them, the kind that only very wealthy people drive. Good morning, ma'am. We're looking for Alfred Monson, one of the men said. Jessica raised an eyebrow in surprise, but didn't have time to ask a single question. It's the old man you took in last night. He's my father. He has memory problems, and as luck would have it, he forgot to take his meds yesterday, so he got lost. When he gets that way, he's like a child, only a big one. The stranger explained, seeing the confused look on Jessica's face. In addition to a change of clothes, the man brought medicine for Mr. Munson who immediately took it. Soon, his memory slowly started to return, filling his mind with images and memories. Now, there was no doubt left as to who the man in the picture was. It really was Alfred Munson. That photograph was taken shortly before he broke up with Jessica's grandmother. During his long and eventful life, the man managed to make a decent fortune, which he passed on to his son. Alfred didn't even suspect that he had another son out there because Rosemary Moore cut off any contact with him when they broke up. And now, the elderly businessman found out that he didn't just have another son, but also a granddaughter who helped her grandfather without even knowing who he really was. Upon learning of the deplorable state of the orphanage, Mr. Munson donated a six-figure amount for its renovation and expansion. Now, the orphans were going to have their own basketball court, a swimming pool, and a playground full of soft toys, among other things. Meanwhile, having told her grandmother that she met Alfred Munson, Jessica started taking turns visiting each of them, trying to catch up on lost time. Looking at their happy faces, the young woman felt that she was successfully fulfilling her duty and was going to continue visiting and supporting her grandparents.